You did your undergrad in some design field, industrial design, motion design, graphic design, illustration. But you want to break into UX, user experience design. Here comes the question: Is it worth doing a master's degree in UX? What about what about if you did not major in any design field? You are from economics. You are from law school. You are a medical student. In that case, is it worth getting a master's degree in UX or maybe a boot camp? Short answer: No, absolutely not. Long answer: Also a no. Only and only if you have thought through these seven. Things. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to walk you through why you do not need a master's degree in UX to get into UX, but also why you might want one. I will do this in three chapters. First, let's reason from first principle. Let's align on what exactly about a master's degree that we need. Next is what are the benefits of getting a master's degree? The seven things to consider. What are those seven things? And lastly, I will share with you why I got my master's degree. From design school. If those all sound interesting and exciting for you, grab your favorite drink and let's get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. First, let's reason with first principle. Let's get alignment. Why do we need a master's degree? What is it about? Getting a master's degree is so that I can be called a master. You get a master's degree, right? You want to get a master's degree because you want to break into UX. But that's not it. UX is not the end point. You probably want to get a job in UX. You want to work as a UX designer, which means master's degree is not the end. It's not what you're after. Master's degree is just a mean to an end, an end in being getting a job in UX. Well, with this first principle reasoning, everything becomes clear. Because if you really want to get a job in UX, all you have to understand is what gets you hired as a UX designer. If master's degree, the diploma, the degree is what they need, then okay, yes, you need a master's degree. But what I'm telling you is. That is only one, one, one small, 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 small factor about getting hired. That's not the full picture. Look at your resume. Master's degree only take up three lines. It's not gonna take up the entire page of the resume, which proves the point that it's not that of a big deal. What's the big deal? Is your portfolio. If you have a great portfolio, with a master's degree, with an undergrad, with a fantastic designer, all the work you showcase in your portfolio is just so amazing. It blows. Everybody's mind. Everybody will fight for you. They will hire you. They don't care where you're from. They don't care which school you go to. They don't care if you have no education. You produce fantastic work that drives business to the moon, maybe even to Mars. Who knows? That is what gets you hired. In other words, to get to the end goal of getting a job in UX, you need a great portfolio. A great portfolio that showcases that you understand UX and you can execute that great UX. And UI in sample projects. Repeat. All you need is a great portfolio that showcases that you understand UX and you can execute UX through a sample of projects. And I did all the research in master's degrees, and now you're telling me I don't need to go. You don't have to freak out or doubt yourself now because in chapter two it might help give you more clarity. So let's go to chapter. Two. What are the benefits of getting a master's degree? What are the seven things you need to consider? I spent seven hours reflecting, introspecting, going back to my two years of master's degree. What did I gain? So the first thing you need to consider is the professors. Those will be the people that give you the lecture. Teach you new things, give you guidance, which will point you to directions of what to focus on, what are the options, where your career can go, what do you want to learn. Other than guidance, the next important thing about professor is the lectures. They have a lot of them are really famous professors. They wrote a lot of papers. For example, they are well known in the industry, so you get to learn from these best people. It's great. All the lectures and lessons and mini workshops and homework assignments tasks. They will give you inspirations. You were like, "Oh, this is so interesting. Oh, I didn't know they can do that. Oh, wow!" 
they can totally point you to new things, new subjects, new topics, new research, things that you could never thought about or would never run into by yourself. One example for me is when I was in grad school, my teacher, my professor introduced me to a lot of different VR applications. We had a video call with the Leap Motion team, the infrared sensor that can track your hands, you can do all kinds of interesting hand gestures in VR. They introduced me to a VR game called Job Simulator. And because of that, a few months ago during Cyber Monday, I bought the next version of that game, Vacation Simulator. Professors are resources. They teach you new things, they point you to new things. That's a great thing to get automatically if you go into a school, go into a graduate program. Next, number two, the environment. I'm one of those people who are constantly influenced by the environment. Are there any natural lights? How are the sound insulation? Are there a lot of people, a lot of motion moving in front of me? Are there any coffee aroma? Would they have my favorite drink around? All that is to say, when you're in school, you're in a really specific, particular environment. That is good for learning. It's easy to learn and you can absorb energy. Energy? You can absorb knowledge better when you're with other students in a group learning setting. That's what school will give you. It will also give you real pressure, like deadlines and presentation to do your design work, rather than you sitting on your own room, looking at your computer and get distracted by your cats, dogs, birds, crocodiles, lions, zebra, giraffes. When you get back to your project, oh, it's two months later. What's going on? Where was my time? Where did it go? The moderate level of stress and pressure from school will keep you focused, give you this tunnel vision of honing down into your task your craft, your work, problem solving skills, which can push you further and further that you might not be able to do on your own. The last bit that tied the previous two together is competition. In a group setting with other peers, other students, with more than amount of stress and pressure, more or less, you will start to compete with your peers a little bit. Yeah, you will help out each other, but deep down, you want to win. Maybe just I want to win. But healthy competition is a great thing. It motivates you, it pushes you further. If you're on your own, who are you competing with? Next, number three, structured programs. Schools will have programs, curriculum. It's all structured. How many classes you have to take, how many credits you need to graduate. It's all set up. It's all structured. All the things you need to know or most of the things you need to know in UX are already laid out, planned out in sequence, in a particular order for you. This is a benefit from school. It's methodical, it's systematic. Is structured versus you learn UX on your own. You get information here and there. You don't know the right sequence. You might have to connect all the dots by yourself, but at the same time, you don't know if those are dots to connect. In school, there's less of this problem. Number four, summer internships. This is one of the things that matter to me a lot because when you go to grad school, you have two semesters, one and two. And in between, there is summer, which means summer internships, which means they could potentially lead to a return full-time offer. I get paid working as an intern, it will also show up nicely on my resume, and it will give me a boost when I apply for a full-time job after I graduate. And if you're not in school, you're not qualified for the internship, which means you don't have the experience at working as an intern in a real-world environment, you didn't get paid working for it, you have nothing to put on your resume, and by definition, you have a zero chance for a return offer, so it's quite nice to have an internship. Number five, research projects. Like I mentioned from the first section, professors, some of them do research, and if you're in school, if you are their students, you will have the opportunity to work with them on their research. Either they already have openings hiring people, or you can just ask them, Hi, can I help? I'm interested in learning this, this topic, and you seem to be the expert in this field. I admire you so much, I respect you so much. Don't actually write that. No, no, no. And it does help two things. One, your resume, you can put that because it is professional experiences. If you don't know why, make sure to check out my video about 13 things you have to include in your resume. Number six. Networking. Networking is a very big topic, so it's probably a video for another time. In this context, school does give you opportunities to network. For example, you have networked with your classmates, you become friends, you might even get help from upperclassmen in your school, which I did. He became my mentor and more or less helped me got into Google. And then there's also the professor's network. They know other people, they can connect you with people they worked with in the past connect you with companies that they work in the past, connect you with other teachers with research projects that you're interested in, but in other programs. They can 
maybe get you internships. And after that will be like the school network. Like certain schools will have like a career fair, recruiters come in and hire students from there. At our center, my grad school, there's so many kids just go to Apple because Apple came to our center, have a dedicated session with art center students, review their portfolios, just have quota for art center students specifically. That's amazing. And truth be told, if you know, I got an internship at Waymo, Google's self-driving car project at the time. I first got introduced to that opportunity, to that job post through my school email because the hiring manager used to be in the same program that I was in. So there's this connection of people who graduate from the program, they work at somewhere, they're hiring interns. So they send out an email to reach to different students. And that's the school network of how things can go in this marvelous way. Lastly will be your friend network. You make new friends, you make new people, you get inspiration from them, you learn from them, you do group project, you know who you can be friends with for life. Humans are resources, humans are assets. Make more friends. Don't be like me. I'm so sad. I have no friends. But actually, I still keep in touch with a few folks that I met from Art Center, from grad school. I met them again when I was in Shanghai earlier this year. And that's number six. That's the networking part. I know you're tired. Let's hang in there. One last benefit. One last thing to consider. This is actually quite important to some people. Legal presence. This has a lot of assumptions baked in, but hear me out. So if you're from a different country, you want to get closer to the place that you want to work in the future. Just to be clear, this video is for information only. This is not legal advice. Do not trust some random dudes with 7k subscribers on YouTube about legal presence. I'm just describing what I saw and what I witnessed when I was at Georgia Tech. When I was at Art Center, I saw a lot, I met a lot of international students, international grad students. They want to do UX work in the US. So they came to a US school to get a master's degree in the field of UX. But if you are a US citizen, if you are from the country that you want to work at in the end, then this does not apply to you. Again, this is information only. This is not legal advice. I'm just sharing what I saw. But actually, there's an eighth thing to consider because you will get a really nice and pretty diploma from your master's degree if you go to school to get that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. You see this beautiful piece of paper? That's totally why I got a master's degree. It's pretty, yeah? And speaking of my master's degree, let's go to the final chapter. Why I got my master's degree. I'd have made a video to cover my master's degree, what courses I took, what I thought about the program. If you're interested, link in the corner, description box down below. Just to catch you up on speed right now. I got a master's degree from Art Center College of Design. And I went for three very specific reasons. Number one, I want to learn about augmented reality and artificial intelligence. And that was the subject, the topic, the program they had at the time, because they changed the subject every few years or so. Which was fun, I trained some AI models for gesture recognitions. I made a foot interface in AR using your foot to interact with contents. I made a full body interface in AR. You use your full body to control, not just your fingers or your hand. I also did some camera-based AR concepts. So AI and AI at the time might not be the most trendy thing. It's way before Facebook become better. So it's not exactly UX, it has some element in it. And by the time I went to Art Center for grad school, I already have four internships under my belt. So I know it will be okay for me to learn about something that is a little bit less UX. Reason number two is a mix of environment and networking. Because like I mentioned, environments shape me a lot. So I like to be in an environment with other folks other peers, learn from each other, challenge each other, and make new friends, and have that friend network, and have that school network, which will give me a network of people with friends, and the school network, which like I explained before, it helped me get my Waymo internship. Which leads to my third reason, I want another internship in between. I want a chance to get a full-time return offer from that internship. And I did, got the internship, but not the full-time offer because they didn't have headcount. So those are the three reasons that matter to me the most. But if I were to map my entire master's degree into those seven different buckets or categories, 
here's what it would be. For professors, yes, there are some good professors. For the environment, yes, the undergrad at our center is crazy good. Structured program, for sure, is a little bit not relevant because it's not UX specific. Another summer for internships, yes, absolutely, and I got it. So if you want an internship, make sure to look at the curriculum for school because some they might not have four semesters to give you a summer in between for the internship. Research project, not really. Because the research happened in the summer and I took the internship at the time. Networking, yes, totally make some great friends, network with some good professors, I went to some career fairs, talked to recruiters. Last, legal presence, yes, I was in the US. Our center did give me a STEM OPT, which gave me three years to work in the US after I graduate, which is stellar. Oh no, so many things to consider. What am I gonna do? Okay, so here is a good rule of thumb, I think. If you are a highly motivated self starter, you can find your own projects, you know how to do a good UX portfolio project, you're willing to put in the time, learn, and work your butt off, you have some PM, engineer, designer friends you can lean on and learn from, and you can ask questions and get advice, and you can get some side UX job on Fiverr, on Upwork. Likely, you don't need a master's degree. You know exactly what to do, you're motivated, you can do it. You also save a big chunk of money as well, and, and all those things that I mentioned should give you good solid UX projects that lead to a job. And on the other side, if you're looking for something more structured, more systematic, you don't want to think, you want to connect dots, you want the environment, the network, the internship opportunity with real UX projects, you want to meet new people, learn from those people, and you have the mean, then a master's degree is a solid idea. So after all those, what do you think? You're gonna do a master's degree? Let me know in the comment section down below. Or you think there are other things I did not cover or you have more specific nuanced questions, feel free to also comment down below. Or even better, join my new and free Discord community and let's chat over there. Lastly, thank you guys for watching, like and subscribe to support this very, very small channel. There are a lot more UX and finance content that can help you advance your design career and make more money from your portfolios, resumes to investing and option trading. Take a look, something will pique your interest and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers!